Do you remember what Jehovah's name means? He causes to become? No. This is Caleb and Sophia. It's a kid's cartoon created by Jehovah's Witnesses, if you haven't seen this before. It gets pretty cringy. It's their method of propagandizing to children, and they've made a whole series out of this. Well, as it turns out, Jehovah's Witnesses have actually made a series out of, I'm sorry, videos for teenagers, too, surprisingly. There are, like, a bunch of these videos for teens about how to manage your money and all kinds of other stuff. So let's talk about their children's series, From Kids to Teens. Let's watch this Caleb and Sophia video, and then we're going to look at some of their teenagers' videos. If this is your first time watching me, I'm coming into this as an ex-Jehovah's Witness who is kind of appalled at the propaganda methods they use to indoctrinate kids. So, yeah, let's watch this and see what they have to say for themselves. Oh, I can't do this. How's your talk coming? Terrible. Jehovah's Witnesses give talks. Well, the men give talks, not the women. And they start you from a really young age. You get up there on the lectern or whatever. Usually the, the first talks you do is just you reading an excerpt from the Bible. You're just reading like 10 verses or something. It takes five minutes. You step down and whatever. It's not really that big of a deal. They don't have to prepare an outline or any of that other stuff. I, I did a few of these for sure. And if you get to the end and you're like running out of time and it took you too long to read, then they, they take a pencil and they tap the pencil on a desk. It's called getting tapped. And you definitely don't want that to happen. So anyways, yeah, that's what they're talking about right now. Terrible. Maybe someone else could do this. Hmm. Do you remember what Jehovah's name means? He causes to become? Yes. No, no. Okay, this is really interesting. Let me explain what the name Jehovah means, actually, where it originated anyways. The real holy name, the Tetragrammaton, is YHWH. That's what the name is when it appears in the Bible. And it only ever appears in the Old Testament. The Tetragrammaton is not found in any existing New Testament manuscript, all of which have the word Kyrios, or Lord, or Theos, meaning God, in Old Testament quotes where the Hebrew text has the Tetragrammaton. Now, let me explain why that is. If you're not familiar with this whole thing and, and why Jehovah's Witnesses think the name is Jehovah and not Yahweh as it actually is, there was a group of people called the Canaanites that lived in the same area as the Jews in Israel at the time. And they had their own pantheon, their own set of gods that created things, and they worshipped this god for this thing and that god for that thing. You'll probably recognize some of the names, interestingly enough. The main god's name was El, and he created, collectively, the Elohim, the group of gods under him. That's what they called them, the Elohim. Some of the members of the Elohim were gods like Baal, Marduk, Yahweh was one of them. Yahweh was the Canaanite god of metallurgy. So the Israelites come along and they adopt one of the, the Canaanite gods, Yahweh. They took him on as their own. They worshipped him as like the main guy and, you know, put in their holy book, you're not allowed to worship any of the others. Kind of a weird commandment, right? If there aren't any other gods, why are you putting it in that you can't worship others in the first place? Just a really odd thing to put in there unless there are others. So time passes and the Israelites develop something of a superstition about pronouncing the holy name. They believe you should never say the name Yahweh. At the time, ancient Hebrew didn't have vowels in it. The vowels were assumed. So the name was just written Y-H-W-H. When ancient Hebrew finally added vowels as a language, the vowels that they added were just little markers in the corner and dots and commas so that you could go back through old texts and manually add the vowels to anything. Okay, here you go. So if you look here, the vowels are these like five dots for the E and then one dot for the O. The letters are completely different shapes. So when you want to go back and add vowels to a text or something, all you have to do is insert the dots. You don't have to 
change the text, you don't have to rewrite it, don't have to move them around or any of that other stuff, right? So when they developed vowels for this, they had the holy name in their texts, Y-H-W-H, the Tetragrammaton. And they read these texts out pretty commonly at their synagogue services and stuff. But they didn't want anybody to accidentally pronounce the holy name, Yahweh. So they inserted the vowels for the word Adonai, which means Lord. It was supposed to be unpronounceable. So what it ended up being was Y-A-H-O-W-A-H, Yahowah. Did I spell that correctly? Uh, it's really hard to spell without looking at it. It was the vowels from Adonai, the consonants from Yahweh, and it made nonsensical garbage. That was the plan. That was the hope with it. As that name passed through Germanic regions... They pronounced Y's like J's and W's like V's, and it became Jehovah. So the, the name Jehovah is really just a bastardization of the original actual name. It was never intended to be Jehovah. J's didn't even exist until the 1400s. So as far as the name meaning he who causes to become, no. There is no evidence of that. There is no proof of anything that they're saying here jehovah means nothing it's made up now as far as what the word yahweh means it's believed that it was a holy incantation before it became a, you know an israelite god basically or even before it was a canaanite god it was just like a a, a saying that people used like an incantation some kind of a special meaning behind it then it became the canaanite god of metallurgy then the Israelite God, and eventually it became banned from being spoken. So that's the explanation in a nutshell. Do you remember what Jehovah's name means? He causes to become? Yes, he can become anything he needs to get great things done. And he can also help others to become what he wants them to be. Think about it. Jehovah is the creator. You know, this is supposed to be shown to children. This is just wrong. This is obviously propaganda designed to drag them in and indoctrinate them, right? Think of all the animals he's made. These, these clashing animation styles are rough to watch, dude. Oh, my God. Look at Caleb reacting to some elephant. This is... They really should not have mixed animation styles, in my opinion. Think of all the animals he's made. Huh? Whoa! Wow, that's a big whale. Huh? He created our universe. Look at all the planets he made. Whoa! He makes sure everything has what it <laughs> needs to grow. Dude, this animation is actually on point, I would say, generally, right? Pretty impressive animation. The sound effects, not so much, maybe. Jehovah can make us powerful, too. Look at Moses. He took a shy man and used... Moses was not a real person, FYI. I don't know if you guys were aware of this, but, uh, you know, you can believe in God or whatever. That's totally 100% fine with me, but he wasn't real. I mean, Moses was fake. There should be evidence of this guy and the things that he did, you know, his influence on the Egyptians or anything, anything at all. There should be some evidence that he existed, and there is none. He took a shy man and used him to split the Red Sea. If he can do all of that, do you think he can help you pronounce hard names and get prepared for your talk? Yeah. But of course, to receive his help, you have to ask him for it. Okay, so maybe their lips moving isn't the best style animation. Like, the dad's lips look like somebody is moving them on a corpse, like we're looking at Weekend at Bernie's or something. But otherwise, it's pretty good. Hope you have to ask him for it. He's telling him to pray, I guess. His name was... Mephibosheth, the sons of Rimon, the Beerothite. And he succeeded is the point. 
absolutely disgusting, man, that they propagandize to kids, indoctrinate them, drag them into this, and make them work for them effectively. Jehovah's Witnesses give children roles in the congregation that they refer to as privileges, where they work to pull the microphones out and hand them down to people. They give talks. They manage the books. They handle service and all this other stuff. And they call them privileges. You working for me is a privilege. So anyways, they made a, a series for teenagers also. I wanted to take just a quick look at it because they have some really interesting stuff. It seems innocuous. It seems like it's not that big of a deal, like whatever. But again, it's propaganda. And they push things in there subtly without you even realizing. So this is the video designed for teenagers. How to manage your money. Let's see what they have to say. Hey there. You both landed jobs, eh? Mom and Dad will be proud. Interesting, just the animation style differences alone, right? Like, one of them was borderline Pixar-level animation. Like, really high-quality stuff. And all their stuff is done in-house. This is Jehovah's Witnesses that have learned to do this and are producing these videos. And this one is, like, done on a whiteboard it's very low budget i don't know just kind of interesting to me first payday what are you gonna do with all that money hmm so fast food and shopping i guess is the point because you know women like to buy shoes and purses with their money and men like to buy food okay everybody needs it of course every job has its difficulties and inconveniences but our hard-earned money can give us the power to buy and do lots of things. It can help us meet our physical needs. They believe that you should earn exactly enough money to survive and not a penny more, basically. They don't think that you should strive to succeed in life because that's less time you are devoting to knocking on doors to bringing new people into the religion and so on and can buy other things that we might want. There are a few things you'll want to keep in mind about money. Keep money in its place. No, we're not talking about a physical place. See, what did I tell you? Like a bank. Keep your priorities straight. Be rich with God. Okay, interesting. What are the priorities? The Bible, I assume, is what this is. Family. So the Bible comes above family. Okay. Education is below family, money is below education, and then fun, which comes in the form of sports apparently, is below money. That is the sequential order in which everybody should live their life, I guess. Be rich with God, the Bible says. I'll be rich with your mom. Take time to get to know him, to be his friend. He'll help you be content with what you have. You'll be happier, whether you have a lot or a little. And you'll make him happy, too. At Proverbs 23, 5, you'll be happy with a little. Is that what he said? Let me listen to this one more time. Whether you have a lot or a little. So you'll be happy with him whether you have a lot or a little. Okay. Well, I was a Jehovah's Witness, and I was simply not happy. Matter of fact, I know a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses and ex-Jehovah's Witnesses who took or take anti-anxiety medicine, antidepressants, constantly, because they're so unhappy. They're so deeply depressed and broken up with what's happening to them right now, being taken advantage of, being lied to constantly. It's not fun. It's not a fun life to be a Jehovah's Witness. Trust me on this. And you'll make him happy, too. At Proverbs 23, 5, the Bible says money can sprout wings like an eagle and fly off into the sky. So it's important to learn now how to take care of your money so that when you need it, it's there to take care of you. So if you notice, this whole message is presented to you in a way that most people couldn't agree with. Keep money in its place and learn to take care of it or learn how to spend it responsibly, basically, right? But what they're really saying is don't try to make more money than what is absolutely necessary to survive. I'm sorry, man. I simply disagree. Money is a good thing. Having money is good. 
The idea that money doesn't buy happiness is a delusion granted to the poor by the rich. I don't buy it. It's nonsense as far as I'm concerned. Money, don't tell me money can't buy happiness. Money can absolutely buy happiness. Now, can it buy complete happiness? Like, can it buy a family? No, I can't buy a family. I certainly would like to have a family. But if I have a family, I'm not necessarily happy either. Money is a necessary component. Having enough material goods to take care of your needs and provide for you and provide for your family and all that stuff, that is a key component to happiness. I simply don't buy it. That money is the root of all evil, or the love of money is the root of all evil, or whatever other nonsense. First, make a plan for your money, otherwise called a budget. Make a list of the things you need and how much each costs. Good. Now, add a few things. Okay, this is creepy and weird, dude, some of this stuff. Now, add a few things you want and how much each costs. Add it all up. Now, compare that with how much money you'll earn each week. Hmm. Are these things so important that you need to spend most or all of your money on them? Might need to put off some of those wants because it's also good to save some money. See, they're basically telling you, I understand that you, you, there are things that you want, but you shouldn't get them. You should save the money instead or just not work. Spend more time on the Bible. If you have extra money, you should be spending time reading the Bible and talking to, knocking on doors, talking to people in the congregation, and all that other stuff. That's really what this is about. You know, put money away for a time when you'll need it. At Ecclesiastes 9-11, the Bible says time and unexpected events can overtake any of us. It's smart to have something set aside for yourself just in case you need it, or to help someone else. Or you may need something that costs more than you can earn in a week, or a month, even a year. So each week, save some money so that, wait, what? Don't want to wait? Ooh, credit. This is so weird, dude. Well, you could do that, but credit carries a cost called interest, and it can really add up. That's true. That's true. I've never had a credit card in my life because my credit has been so bad because I wrecked it when I was a little kid. You know, when I was a teenager, I had nothing. I was kicked out by Jehovah's Witnesses. I was removed from the religion. My mom wouldn't talk to me. And my life just went into shambles, which was their plan all along. Really. I mean, they intended for my life. I'm talking the congregation and my family intended for my life to go to shambles so that I would come back to the religion. They openly say this. If you wreck their lives, then they'll come back to the religion so that we can clean their lives up for them. So anyways, my life was in shambles intentionally by them, and I wrecked my credit trying to dig myself out of that hole. So yeah, never had a credit card up until recently, like very recently. I think I have like a $300 credit card or something. When you lose track of the things you buy on credit, you can easily end up paying much more for everything you buy. That's absolutely true. It's super dangerous to have a credit card. I've seen it go bad a lot. Sometimes it can take years and years and years to pay off credit card debt. So have a plan for your money. Stay within your budget. Save for the unexpected and avoid unnecessary debt so you can spend more time getting to know God. Yeah, so a lot of this was really sound advice. It was all okay. Just be careful not to use credit cards if at all possible. Don't go into unnecessary debt. Save money and stuff like that. But it, in between, it was all sprinkled with pro-Jehovah's Witness, don't it do things that you enjoy propaganda. It was just bizarre to hear them say some of this stuff openly and the hierarchy that they put everything into. Personal enjoy things that you like doing, just fun, is at the very bottom of the list, apparently. In my opinion, having fun is like one of the most important things you should do, right? Playing video games. Notice that this is not a video game listed. They definitely don't like video games. It's just a normal 
game, like sports game. That's what you should be doing for fun, if anything at all. And it should be on the very bottom of the list. So sports is at the very bottom or just personal fun is at the bottom. Money, I guess, prioritizes as like second place. It should be at the very bottom, right? Just barely above having fun. And then education is super low on the list. And then family and then the Bible. They definitely don't like college at all. They are deeply opposed to the idea of anybody going to college. And if that's how they feel about college... I can't imagine how they feel about money and just personal enjoyment. Listen to the governing body member, Tony Morris, talk about going to college. They really don't like it. Sometimes people will say, well, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses are against education. Well, that's ridiculous. We're not against education. They're most definitely against education. Uh, We are pro-education. It's just that we are selective with who does the educating. I.e., they shouldn't be going to college. They should be going to the Kingdom Hall, which, again, is categorized as, you know, religion. They don't want people learning facts about the world. They want people learning ideas produced by Jehovah's Witnesses. They want people learning things from the Bible, not facts about the world, but things from the Bible. We promote divine education. We believe it to be superior because it leads to everlasting life. So with schools of higher education and many of their curriculums, and if you know anything about it, maybe some of you have been, uh, do they not have philosophy one and philosophy two? Okay, I don't know who they is, but sure, I guess those are classes that exist in colleges. Go on. It doesn't matter what you're going to major in. No, I, I think it matters what you're going to major in. I, they don't always give you philosophy one and two, do they? I went for substance abuse counseling. I don't ever remember taking a philosophy class, even in a psychology-based curriculum or a psychology-based degree. Okay, people are saying it varies by school. Maybe I just missed it. All right, go on. And they start you off there. You, you'd be going for another thing, but you, you have philosophy one, you have philosophy two. Just depends on the school. And then all of a sudden it gets in there, and the intellectual gripping of the mind, uh, very hard to recover from. The intellectual gripping of the mind is hard to recover from. Are you guys hearing this? Once you start thinking, it's downhill from there. I've seen this so many times, and we could tell you so many horror stories, and the parents are all uh, distraught. Well, you put them there. I remember one mother, I talked to her son. He went to Harvard, and we were in New England. He became an evolutionist. The horror, an evolutionist, you say. Raised in the truth. Mom couldn't believe it, but I got him to tell me what he really thought. She was devastated. Well, you let him go there. And this real bright professor got a hold of him. Those bright professors, right? Intelligent people, man. They're the problem, okay? I'm so sick of intelligent people who have information about the world around us telling that information to others. It's just wrong. Hard to believe. And sometimes... Some parents will drop their child off at a university, especially when they send them away from home, away from their established theocratic structure. And elders that serve there will tell you, and I've been in a lot of places where there's, they call college towns, time and again an elder or servant in some cases too, they drop their child off, a few months, they went to a few meetings, they're gone. Parents. Well, they learn better and discover that Jehovah's Witnesses are full of it and they're a destructive organization, and then they disappear. How about that? Who could have seen that one coming, huh? See, this is why they need kids to avoid college. This is why they drill it into parents as early as humanly possible. Don't send your kid to college. Don't encourage college. Don't glorify it. Don't and don't tell them that it's a good idea. Don't tell them they should make more money. Don't even encourage them to look in a direction that could hint at making more money. They should be dumb, door-knocking fools. Basically nothing more. Parents are all upset. Why did you do more for my son? Why did you do more for my daughter? I would say, who dropped him off? The elders are heartbroken. They try. 
know a lot of them personally. So you have to decide that. You want to take the risk? Your call. We're warning you. So that's what's called a conscience matter among Jehovah's Witnesses. Another conscience matter, as an example, I believe, is getting an organ transplant, getting somebody to donate an organ to you. I don't think that that's explicitly against the rules anymore. It used to be. Now I think it's a conscience matter. If you feel it's okay, you can do it. Taking medicines that were developed using blood plasma or fractions or whatever else, there are certain blood pressure medicines and others that were developed with research that used blood fractions and they believe that blood transfusions are evil and wrong and blah 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 so taking that medicine's a conscience matter that's another example but just think about where they place education right they hate education i i feel that's pretty obvious right now imagine where they place money if it's below education and personal enjoyment is even below that. That should give you an idea of their framework, of how they view the world. Family and Jehovah come above literally everything and everything else in, the, in life. We understand you're going to be educated at some point in your life by somebody, probably K through 12. We understand you're going to need money to survive. We understand you're going to enjoy yourself. But you should detest these things by and large. Only thing that you should enjoy is family and the Bible. That's it. That is just, I'm sorry, man. That's an ass backwards way of viewing the world. It's just wrong. Let me know what you think about it in the comments.